guys, I'm Monica. Today I'm gonna to be talking about a routine that you're gonna be doing every single day on any inpatient rotation, and that is pre-rounding. So I'm gonna assume that if you're watching this video, you already know what pre-rounding is, so let's get right into it. Now I'm gonna be going over my personal routine. So everyone has his or her own routine, but the important thing is you need to have a system and you need to stick to it. So even if you're several days into the rotation, don't get lazy, don't get cocky, do every single step of your routine every single day and that way nothing will fall through the cracks. So my routine is to go by the format of a soap note. So a soap note will start with overnight events, so I guess it's an oh soap note, but overnight events, then subjective. Subjective, we don't get until we talk to the patient after we pre-chart, so kind of skip that. And then O stands for objective, and that's most of the data that we're gonna be gathering while we're pre-charting. And then there's A for assessment and P for plan. And your assessment plan is what you should be thinking about as you comb through the data. So I'm gonna be going through examples by showing you a screen share. And my EMR at our institution is Epic, but even if you don't have Epic, I would still watch the video because it doesn't matter what EMR you have, the process is gonna be the same. And one more big tip I wanna give is to set yourself up for success. So once you have a system down, I would customize your EMR so that it makes it very efficient for you to go through your routine step by step. So for example, for me, when I open up a patient's chart, my tabs are in the order of how I would pre-chart. And that way I don't forget any steps. So how do you know what significant events happened overnight? So there are three places where you're gonna get this information. One is your morning sign out. The second place is gonna be notes. So what I do is when I first open a patient's chart to pre-round, I go to the notes section. And I look at nursing notes to see what happened during the night shift. So guys, please don't ignore nursing notes because they don't page after every little thing. So it's good to know what exactly happened. So at our institution, the note type that the nurses use at the end of the shift is the end of the shift summary. So that's when I'm reading. And you also want to read consultant's notes. So those are labeled as consults. And for example, this note is from the pulmonary team. So I want to know what recommendations the pulmonary team gave. And I want to update my team on those recommendations in case that informs our plan. Another place that you can see what happened overnight is the order history. So sometimes night float, they're super busy, maybe they didn't have time to write down every little thing that they ordered. So you can look in the order history and see what the last few orders were. In Epic, this is gonna be under the orders tab. So any significant event that you see in any of these areas, you're gonna wanna include in your overnight events or last 24 hour events in your SOAP presentation. Hey guys, this is post editing Monica and I'm just putting this extra clip in because I forgot to add in a very important spot where you're gonna look for overnight events or interval events and that is the medication administration record or MAR for short. So you wanna look in this tab because you wanna know exactly what your patient got and or what dose the patient skipped. So there are three big categories of medications when it comes to administration. One is scheduled medications. So these medications are given to the patient at the prescribed time intervals no matter what. And then there are continuous medications. So continuous medications are what they sound like, typically an IV medication that's literally continuously going into the patient. And then finally, there are PRN medications or as needed medications. And patients don't get these medications unless they ask for them or if the nurse determines that the patient meets some certain criteria. So for example, the nurse is gonna give this PRN Tylenol if the patient has a certain temperature. So you wanna look at scheduled medications for a couple of reasons. One is you want to know if your patient is not getting the medication you prescribed. And the nurse doesn't necessarily always page if the patient doesn't get the medication because they document it in the MAR and you should be able to see it there. Another thing you wanna check for in the scheduled medications is one-time doses. So if you order a medication to be ordered just once, it's gonna show up in the scheduled medication section. An example in which this is really important is, for example, if you're diuresing a patient, a lot of times we spot dose patients with Lasix or furosemide, a diuretic, and you wanna see how many doses of Lasix your patient got in the last 24 hours, and that's gonna be important information to know when you report your I's and O's. Then continuous medications, you just wanna always check this because 
it's easy to throw on some IV fluids and forget that they were there. So pro tip for that, please always put an end time when it comes to IV fluids. But you just wanna be aware of what your patient's on. And the last section is PRN medications. Please do not forget to check PRN medications. And this is especially important with certain medications, like for example, pain. So this patient has, let's look at this row. So hydromorphone two milligrams or Dilaudid is the brand name, and that is an opioid. If you look in these columns, it shows every time the patient took that medication or asked for that medication. So this is important to note because when you go on rounds, let's say you have a patient who's in for severe pain, you wanna give the team a sense of how bad the pain is by giving them how much pain medication or extra pain medication the patient took over the last 24 hours. So next is vial signs. So for vial signs, obviously you wanna to go to the vial sign tab in your EMR, and if you have Epic, this is what that will look like. So let's walk through each vial sign and talk about what information would be important. So for example, the temperature. If the patient had a fever, then I would note what the maximum temperature was. So T max is what, that, is what that's called. If there wasn't a fever, when you're actually reporting it to your attending, you probably don't need to say the temperature range, you can just say a febrile. For heart rate, again, I would also give a range and that's listed for you right here. So for blood pressure, the convention is to give a range for both the systolic and the diastolic. And luckily in EPIC, you have that already written for you here, the minimum and the maximum for both the systolic and the diastolic, and I would write all that down. So the next one is SpO2, otherwise known as oxygen saturation. And for that, you also wanna give a range if there is a range, or you can say that the patient is just sitting well on room air when you actually do your presentation. When you're actually writing down your numbers, note what the range is, but also how much oxygen the patient is on. So it's really important to know whether the patient's on room air or on say two liters and nasal cannula. So then there's weight. I kind of group weight with the other vital signs and this trend can be very helpful when you're diuresing a patient, for example. So when you write your numbers down, I would note today's weight and then also yesterday's weight to get a sense of the trend. So the next section after the vital signs, you wanna note the patient's ins and outs. So what the patient is taking in in terms of fluids and then what they're putting out in terms of urine, stool, drains, whatever. So for this one, what I usually do is I'll adjust the view so that it's showing everything in 24 hour intervals. And I report what the ins and outs were for the last 24 hours. And you wanna note not just what the net INO is, but you also want to say how much went in and how much was out. So moving on down the note template, you would have your physical exam, but you haven't seen the patient yet, so skip that. And then next would be your labs. So in Epic, there is a results tab, and this is what it looks like. So the first thing I do when I'm looking at the results is to actually go to new results view. And when I put it in new results view, it's showing me only the new results. So why is that important? Because when you first admit a patient, you might order a lab that takes like five days to come back. Well, on day five, maybe you've totally forgotten about that lab. Like you don't even remember that you ordered it. So this way, by looking at just the new results, it will show you that result regardless of whenever it was ordered. Because the way that the results tab reports the results is by the day it was ordered. So that's really important to know. So once you're done looking at the new results, you can click time mark. So there's this button here on Epic and that makes everything not italicized again. So it makes everything regular again so that it's easier for you to read. So now you can focus on your daily labs, for example, the CBC. So that's what's shown here. And what's important to know is you don't wanna just write down today's value. You wanna write down yesterday's value as well, or you wanna note whether or not it's stable. So trends are very important in medicine and you wanna make sure you look back, not even just one day or a few days to really get a sense of what's happening to that lab value. So I had a mistake before where I was just comparing today's value with yesterday's value and in reality, the hemoglobin was just very, very slowly trending down, but 
it had trended down a significant amount since admission. So I didn't realize that because I was just looking one day at a time. So next is micro. So this is what the micro tab looks like in Epic. And what I like to do is actually sort by result date because what that's going to do is sort it by the date the test resulted. So you would put all it would put all the newest results on top as opposed to date and time which sorts it by when the test was ordered. So again, making it confusing because if you ordered something several days ago, you're going to forget to look for that result. And for culture results, don't forget to always look at them even though they say in process or preliminary because new things might have come back and they just don't mark it as final yet because they're still looking at the cultures. So it could be that speciation came back or sensitivities came back and so you want to definitely note that. So next is imaging. So here's an example of what the imaging tab looks like in Epic and you want to note any new imaging since the day before. And what I typically do is I'll write down just the key stuff from the impression, but I will read through the whole report and I highly recommend that you do that because sometimes there are incidental findings that may need to be followed up later, but it was just it just wasn't noted as a key thing in the impression. So in our version of Epic, we actually have a separate tab for cardiology. So you have to remember to look at the cardiology tabs for specifically cardiology tests. So for example, like an echo. So next after imaging is going to be your procedures and your studies. So I don't have an example of that here, but just know that you do need to look at procedures and it's really important that you read the brief op note that the proceduralist or surgeon wrote so that you know what happened during the case and whether or not there were any complications. And oftentimes too, like GI for example, they'll put in their colonoscopy note, their op note, what their recommendations are at the bottom. And finally, you have pathology. So this is what a pathology tab would look like. And you want to make sure that you check that every day because of course pathology can take a few days to come back. So you don't want to forget to check that. So remember to check that tab each day. So going back to the note format, your last section is going to be your assessment and plan. So I like to go back to my progress note that I wrote yesterday and look at my assessment and plan. And the reason why I do that is actually a couple reasons. One is that I want to make sure that I followed up on everything that I wrote in my plan the day before. And I want to remind myself of what my problems are and what my assessments were yesterday and how they change for today. Based on the data I have now from pre-charting, does my differential diagnosis change? Do I have a new problem? Is there a new prioritization to the problems? And if there is a new problem, then what are we going to do about it? Does my plan change based on consultant recommendations? So these are all little questions that should be going through your head as you're reading over your assessment plan from yesterday. And you should do this before you even go see the patient because then you know exactly what questions to ask the patient for this objective and you know what things to focus on when you do your physical exam. So that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this was a helpful video. And if it was, please hit that like button and subscribe for more tips on how to succeed in medicine. And please leave comments if you have any questions or any suggestions for content. Bye guys! Oh, 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 oh,